Jesus kid. I believe the good news, so I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. God can use me too, cause I'm a Jesus kid. A Jesus kid, I'm a Jesus kid. Pastor Steve here. Welcome to Kids Church. Today, boys and girls, we're going to be talking about something very important. Do you want to guess what it is? Well, before I tell you, boys and girls, why don't we bow our heads and close our eyes and ask the Lord to bless our time. Jesus, we thank you again, Lord, for this time that you've given to us to be able to come together and to learn more about you. And we pray, Lord, as we learn about you today, Father, that our hearts, God, would just be filled with joy and excitement, Lord, about what you tell us. And so, Lord, may our ears be ready, may our hearts be ready, and may we be open, Lord, for whatever it is that you have for us today. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, can you tell me what this is? Do you know what it is? That's right, it's the Bible. Now, boys and girls, the Bible goes by many different names. Sometimes it's referred to as what we called it, the Bible. Sometimes it's called the Holy Scriptures. Sometimes we refer to it as the sword of the spirit. And other times it's referred to as God's word. Now, there are many other names that it goes by, but we're going to call it the Bible. Now, boys and girls, the Bible is a very special book. It's a very important book. Did you know that the Bible is one book, boys and girls, that tells one unified story, one very important story about one very important person? Do you know who that person is? That's right, it's Jesus. The whole Bible points and talks about Jesus. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about and looking how Jesus is throughout the whole entire Bible. Now, boys and girls, the Bible, this one book that we have, it's a very interesting book because the book that we call the Bible is actually 66 different books all wrapped up in one. Now, we're going to be looking at what makes up this entire Bible. Now, the Bible, these 66 books, are divided into two sections. The first section is the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament, boys and girls, it talks about the coming Messiah, about the promise of Jesus coming to redeem his people. And the Old Testament, boys and girls, is made up of 39 different books. And these 39 different books are divided into four sections. They are divided into the books of the law, the books of history, the books of poetry, and the books of the prophets. Now, that's the Old Testament. Now, the second section, boys and girls, is what we call the New Testament. And like the Old Testament, the New Testament talks about Jesus too. But the Old Testament was pointing to the coming Messiah. The New Testament talks about the fulfillment or the promise or the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Jesus. Now, the New Testament, boys and girls, is divided into 27 different books divided into four separate sections. The sections are the Gospels, the Book of History, the Epistles, and there's even a Book of Prophecy. Now, boys and girls, did you know that the Bible, this one book, these 66 different books inside of this one book, were written by over 40 different authors that come from all kinds of backgrounds and occupations. Mr. Wallace, 
What were some of these different backgrounds and occupations of the writers of the Bible? Well, Pastor Steve, they varied from all over the place. We had people that were shepherds, like myself, fishermen, tax collectors, a doctor, uh, army generals, brothers of Jesus, priests, kings, government officials, and many, many more. Pastor Steve, did you know that the Bible was written on three different continents, like Asia, Europe, and Africa? And that it was written in three different languages, like Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. I only know how to speak one of those. And it was written over a period of 1,500 years. Isn't that wild? That is pretty wild, Mr. Wallace. I did know all of that. Thank you for sharing. Boys and girls, did you know all of that? The Bible written by over 40 different authors in over three different continents in three different languages over 1,500 years? Isn't that awesome? Well, boys and girls, all of these books in the Bible, they all tell the same story. Do you know what that story is? Boys and girls, it's the story of Jesus and what he has done for us. Now, boys and girls, these 66 books that are in the Bible, do you know what they are? Have you memorized them? Well, let's take a few minutes, boys and girls, and learn about the names of the books of the Bible. Let's learn the books of the Bible, the books that you should know. Let's learn where they are, hide them in your heart. Let's yeah. learn the books of the Bible. Today, boys and girls, we're going to be learning about the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now, boys and girls, this first five books of the Bible, this first section is known as the law. Some people call it the Pentateuch, the Torah, or it's even known as the books of Moses. 
Boys and girls, I have a question for you. Do you know why the law was given? Well, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 24, it says, Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. What does that mean, boys and girls? Well, in the New Living Translation, it says this, Let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. And so the law was given to protect the people, to guide the people, to direct the people until Jesus Christ came. Remember, the Old Testament is all about the coming Messiah. So the law was given until the Messiah came. Boys and girls, are you ready? Are you ready to learn about the first five books of the Bible? Are you ready to learn about the Pentateuch? I like the Bible, it's not a fluke that it all starts out with the Pentateuch. Five little books that tell the story of God and Adam and Eve and Joseph and sometimes called five books of Moses. He's the one whose life composes the story with the exception of Genesis. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Read a little every day before you slumber. Cap it all off with a trip through Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Parts are fun, others not so much. Riffs in and flooding and plagues and such. Whether you're German or French or Dutch. We can all learn a thing from the pen of touch. That's not right. Whether you're a king or a queen or a duke. We, we can, can all learn, learn a thing from the pen of Turk. Genesis is the introduction. Tells why the world has ceased to function. Quite the way God intended it from the start. From the start, from the very beginning. Sin came in and made a mess up. All the ways God was gonna bless us. Because we did not trust him with all our hearts. And now we've fallen. The world is fallen. Oh yes, we've fallen. Away from God. It's a tragedy, nasty tragedy. And now we're broken, our hearts are broken. And our world is seriously flawed. It's all messed up. But God's gonna launch his rescue plan. That starts with Sarah and Abraham. And the big, big promise for Jacob and all his kids. One, two, three, four, five, twelve. Then in Egypt, they get stuck. Slaves to Pharaoh, out of luck. So God told Moses he'd help out. And that's what he did. You bet your bippy. We see in Exodus they have success because Moses respects our God and his decree. That's a fancy word for law. And now it's I, and I, the laws get piled up high. God asked if they will try. And they agree. Leviticus is a bunch of rules. The numbers he has been attacked like fools. Forty years later, Moses schooled them again. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. We'll try harder, the young one said. Moses gets older, now he's dead. Follow Joshua instead, all the way to the promised land. We like the Bible, it's not a fluke that it all starts out with the Pentateuch. Joseph and Whether you're a king or a queen or a duke, we can all learn a thing from the Pentateuch. Before we get to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we really need to understand the Pentateuch. Boys and girls, let's continue learning about the books of the law, the Pentateuch, the Torah, by looking at some of the key events and stories and characters that are introduced in the first five books. Let's watch this video for just a few minutes. The Torah begins with God creating and blessing a great piece of real estate, our very good world. And God entrusts it to a creature that reflects the divine image, human, or in Hebrew, Adam. God appoints humanity to rule the world as kings and queens of creation. And the question is whether they will trust God's wisdom to discern good and evil or seize autonomy and define good and evil for themselves. But there's another creature with the humans, a mysterious snake. It's in rebellion against the Creator, and it dupes the humans to foolishly rebel against God's generosity. As a result, humanity is separated from its divine source of life and exiled from a garden of blessing to die in a dangerous wilderness. 
From there, humanity keeps spreading and redefining good and evil, and things go downhill fast. They build cities plagued by violence and oppression, all leading to the foundation of a city called Babylon, where people exalt themselves to the place of God. And now the basic plot conflict of the whole Bible is set. God wants to bless his world and rule it through humans. But now, humans are the problem. They're under the influence of evil, they're stupid and short-sighted, and headed for self-destruction. And this is all a setup for God's solution. We need a new kind of human. And so God promises that a new human will come who won't give in to the snake. In fact, he'll crush it and be crushed by it. From here, the story traces the promised lineage to a man and a woman, Abraham and Sarah. God entrusts them with the same divine blessing given to humanity on page one. And so they leave Babylon to a new garden-like land that God promises to give his family. What follows is the story of Abraham's family. Three generations, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, followed by 12 sons. And our hopes are high until we read their very dysfunctional and destructive family story. They lie, cheat, nearly kill each other. But what did you expect after the garden story? They're humans. Eventually, Abraham's family ends up exiled down in Egypt. All these failures of Abraham's family form a dark background for the handful of bright moments in the story. God stays committed to these people. He even makes them an eternal promise called a covenant that he will rescue and bless all humanity through them. How exactly? Isn't clear. But Abraham's family is at its best when they stop their selfish scheming and trust God's promise with radical faith. From here, the family grows. They end up enslaved in Egypt and were introduced to the Torah's other main character, Moses. God raises him up to rescue the Israelites and bring them to a mountain where they're all invited into a covenant relationship with God. They're given 613 terms of the relationship, guidelines for becoming new kinds of humans who will faithfully represent God to the world. And Moses brokers this whole deal because he's awesome. He's the ultimate prophet who speaks God's word to Israel. He's a priest who represents them before God. And he's even called a king, Israel's leader and deliverer in time of need. But as the Torah progresses, the Israelites fail big time. They violate the covenant and even Moses rebels against God. In fact, the Torah ends with Moses predicting that Israel's failure will continue as they go back into the promised land and they're going to end up in exile once again. But he has hope that God will fulfill his promise to rescue Israel. One day he will cover for their failures. He'll heal their selfish hearts so they can truly love God and live. And then Moses dies. Now, the final sentences of the Torah scroll are surprising. They zoom forward in time. And we hear from the prophetic scribes who shaped the Tanakh. They reflect back on the story of Moses from their vantage point, and they tell us that never again in Israel's history did a prophet like Moses arise. Man, I wish another prophet, priest, king like him would come along. Boys and girls, do you remember some of the key stories and characters throughout the first five books? Well, let's review them for just a minute. In the book of Genesis, what are some of the stories and some of the characters that we see in the book of Genesis? Well, let's start at the very beginning. What do we have at the very beginning? The Bible tells us that in the beginning there was God. And so we see God, and then we see creation, and Adam and Eve, and then the fall of man. And as we continue through Genesis, there's the story of Noah and the ark. Then we see about all of the patriarchs, Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob. And then we learn about the story of Joseph. And at the story of Joseph, that concludes the book of Genesis. And then when we pick up in the book of Exodus, we learn about a man named Moses and how God spoke to Moses through a burning bush and how he told Moses to go to Egypt to bring his people out of slavery. And while they were in Egypt, the 10 plagues that were there, the Passover, the crossing of the Red Sea as the people were delivered, the 10 commandments as the children of Israel were in the wilderness. And in the book of Leviticus, it's all about the priest and the people, the offerings and the sacrifices. And then we get to the book of Numbers. And in the book of Numbers, there's some amazing stories in the book of Numbers. You see Balaam and his talking donkey. You hear about the spies that entered into the land to scout it out. 
You hear about water coming from a rock. There's so many cool stories in the book of Numbers. And then we get to the book of Deuteronomy. And in the book of Deuteronomy, God is talking to the nation of Israel, telling them that if you obey me, I will bless you. But if you disobey me, you're going to be punished. And then we see the death of Moses. And when we return in just a minute, boys and girls, we're going to dig a little bit deeper and look how we see Jesus through the entire Bible, starting with the first five books. Hey kids, let's sing the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Faster now. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the Faster now. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. One more time. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B I B L E. simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself it's not what you have required Search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, which no one could express, how much you do. And though I'm weak and poor, Lord, all I have is yours. Every single breath, oh, I'll bring you more than a song or a song in itself. It's not. It's all about 
it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. And I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I need it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. You're looking into my heart, into my heart, and it's all about you. You're looking into my heart, into my heart. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Boys and girls, Remember that the Bible, this one book, it is one unified story that tells us all about Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. And remember, the Old Testament was all about the anticipation of the coming of Jesus Christ. And the New Testament was the realization that Jesus Christ is here. And so, boys and girls, let's look at what we're going to call the scarlet thread. We're going to look at Christ throughout the entire Bible. You see, boys and girls, before God created the world, he planned to redeem mankind from their sin. From the promise of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 to the sacrifices that are offered as a covering for our sin, God's word points forward to Jesus And this scarlet thread, the plan of mankind's redemption, is one that God has woven into the fabric of history. It's a reminder that throughout Scripture, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, would come to pay the penalty of our sin. And so what we're going to do now, boys and girls, we're going to look at some of the key stories, and we're going to look to see how Jesus is woven through the fabric of history. And so where do we start, boys and girls? Well, we start at the very beginning. We start with creation. And you can find the creation story, boys and girls, in the book of Genesis, chapters 1 and 2. Now remember, boys and girls, creation, God, Adam and Eve. And one of the things that we need to remember, that in the very beginning, There was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You see, boys and girls, it may be hard to comprehend, but this is where we put our faith into practice. God has always been present, and God will always be present. You remember that God has created all things. And boys and girls, who is in control of all things? That's right, God is. Now, boys and girls, why do you think God created you and me? It's a pretty interesting question, huh? Why do you think God created us, boys and girls? Well, everything that God has created was to give him glory. Including you, boys and girls, you were created to give God glory. I was created to give God glory. Giving God glory, boys and girls, means to make much of or to live in a way that shows how awesome God is. You see, boys and girls, the Bible tells us that God gave Jesus power over all of creation. All of creation was created through him, 
by him and for him. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. You see, boys and girls, at the very beginning, at creation, we see Jesus. But that's not, where, that's not the only place that we see Jesus, boys and girls. Remember, he continues throughout all of Scripture. And one of the next places we see Jesus is the story of Noah and the ark. And you can find this story in Genesis chapter 6 through 9. You see, boys and girls, God saw that the people on earth were ruled by sin and that he was sad that he made the world. So he decided that he was going to flood everything, the entire earth. Everything on the earth would die. But God had compassion on a man, a man named Noah, and God told Noah to go and to build the ark. You see, boys and girls, Noah was a righteous man. And Noah tried to do things that were right before God. He tried to follow God and be obedient in everything that he did. God made a promise to Noah. God promised to keep both him and his family safe on the ark when he flood, flooded the earth. So one of the things that God did, boys and girls, is that he sent a pair of each living thing to the ark so that they could be kept alive as well. You see, boys and girls, God is holy, and sin keeps us from being holy, and our sin separates us from God. There's nothing that we could do to become holy on our own, boys and girls. So you know what God did? God sent his son Jesus to this earth to live a perfect and holy life so that he could pay for our sins. The only way that we could be righteous before God is to put our faith and our trust in him. That is the only way that we could have a right relationship with him. You see, boys and girls, in Romans chapter 6, and verse 23, it tells us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, boys and girls, the story of Noah, God provided a rescue plan for him and for his family through the ark. And just as God provided a rescue plan for Noah, he's provided a rescue plan for us. And that's through his son, Jesus Christ. The story of Jesus, the scarlet thread of Jesus continues. And we see that as we continue through the book of Genesis and we get to the story of the patriarchs. And there's a story about a man by the name of Abraham and his son Isaac in Genesis chapter 22. And what we see here in this story, boys and girls, is that God had spoke to Abraham and told Abraham to leave his family and his home and to go to a land that God was going to show him. God made a promise to Abraham and told Abraham that all of the people on the earth were going to be blessed through him. Do you know what Abraham did, boys and girls? Abraham obeyed God. It's important for us to obey God and to remember that God is going to keep his promises to each one of us. So God promised Abraham that his children, his descendants, were going to outnumber all of the stars in the sky. Well, the thing was, boys and girls, at this point in time, Abraham didn't have any children yet. And him and his wife, Sarah, were very old. Many years passed after God made this promise to Abraham. And Abraham began to wonder if God would keep his promise you know what, boys and girls? God did keep his promise. He always keeps his promises. And he, Abraham, and Sarah had a baby boy that they named Isaac. 
And when Isaac got older, God asked Abraham to do something very hard. He asked Abraham to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Abraham was sad. But you know what, boys and girls? He trusted God. And so he took Isaac up to the mountain and he tied him up and he laid him on the altar. And just as he was about to take his knife and to sacrifice his son, the angel of the Lord stopped him. And you know what, boys and girls? As the angel of the Lord stopped him, Abraham and Isaac saw something off to the side. You know what it was? That's right, it was a ram caught in the bushes. God had provided a substitute for Isaac to be able to sacrifice. You see, boys and girls, that ram that was a substitute for Isaac, God provided a substitute for us. You see, boys and girls, that substitute is God's own son, Jesus. Jesus has taken our place on the cross, and he's taken the punishment that we deserve for the sins that we have committed and the sins that we will commit so that we could have his place of righteousness before God. You see, boys and girls, the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, he says, and this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. You see, boys and girls, in the story of Abraham and Isaac here, we see Jesus as our perfect substitute. Now, Jesus, he continues, we continue learning, we continue seeing Jesus through the book of Genesis, the story of Jacob. Jacob, you can read his story in Genesis chapter 25 and 27. You see, Isaac, Abraham's son, and his wife, Rebekah, had twin sons named Esau and Jacob. And one day Esau came back home from hunting and he was very tired. Well, you know what Jacob was doing? Jacob was cooking some stew. And he told Esau that he would give him some stew, but only if he, Esau gave Jacob his birthright. You see, a birthright, boys and girls, was something very special. It was a promise that the family's wealth one day would belong to Esau. Esau was so hungry. You know what he did, boys and girls? He said, yes, Jacob, you can have my birthright. Just give me some of that food. I'm starving. Later, a few years down the road, when Isaac was very old, it was time to give Esau that blessing. Well, Jacob Jacob tricked his daddy, and he disguised himself as his brother Esau. And he went into Isaac's tent and tricked his dad into giving him that blessing, which wasn't his. When Esau returned, he was very angry, and he wanted to kill Jacob. So you know what Jacob did, boys and girls? Jacob left, and he went to live with a, another part of his family far away. Well, many years later, Jacob wanted to return home. And so Jacob set out to return home. But before he got there, his brother Esau met him. Jacob was afraid that Esau was going to want to kill him because he was still angry. But instead, you know what Esau did, boys and girls? Esau treated Jacob kindly. You see, boys and girls, Jacob here is a perfect example of why we need a Savior. Like Jacob, we seek a birthright and a blessing that's not ours. But we can't lie, deceive, or even trick God into receiving that blessing. But you know what happened, boys and girls? Jesus. Jesus shared his birthright and blessing with us when he paid for our sins on the cross and he gave us his righteousness. In Galatians chapter three and verse 29, it tells us, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seeds and heirs according to the promise. Jesus gave us his birthright. Jesus gave us his blessing. 
But boys and girls, that's not where we finish seeing Jesus in the Bible. We continue even into the life of Joseph. And you can read about Joseph in Genesis chapter 41 through 50. Now you see, boys and girls, Jacob, Jacob had 12 sons, but Joseph was his favorite. He even gave Joseph a very special coat, a coat of many colors to wear. But this made Joseph's brothers very angry and mad. Joseph told his brothers about some of the dreams that he had had and that they were going to bow down and serve him. And Joseph's brothers got even more angry and more mad with him. They wanted to kill him. One day, they got their brother Joseph and they threw him into a pit. And then they sold him into slavery to a group of people that were traveling to Egypt. And then they took Joseph's coat, that special coat that Jacob had given him, and they covered it with animal's blood, and they took it back to their father Jacob and told Jacob that Joseph was killed by a wild animal. Well, while Joseph was in Egypt, boys and girls, he was thrown into jail for something he didn't do. But God still blessed Joseph and Joseph ended up helping the Pharaoh and all of the Egyptians. He even helped save the entire world during the seven years of famine. Well, during that time, during the famine, Joseph's brothers came to Egypt to buy food, just like Joseph had told them early on in his dream. Well, Jacob's brothers, when they came and they got the food, guess what they did? They bowed down to Joseph. Well, Jacob's brothers were worried and they were afraid that Joseph was going to punish them for all the bad things that they had done to Joseph. But you know what Joseph told them? He said, don't be afraid, brothers. He said, what you meant for evil, God used it for good. You see, boys and girls, God used the evil that was done to Joseph for good. One day, Jesus was going to come through Joseph's family. And those who crucified Jesus, they intended it for evil. They meant it for evil. But God's plan, God had a different plan. God's plan was for him to be the way that all who trusted him might be made righteous. God had a good plan through all of this. That all who called upon the name of the Lord would be saved. And that's what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. It says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now the story of Jesus continues, continues into the book of Exodus with Moses and the parting of the Red Sea. Do you remember the story of Moses, boys and girls? Remember that after the Pharaoh had died and a new Pharaoh was raised up, a Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph, he began to worry about the number of the people the children of Israel had. He said, you know what? Enough's enough. They're going to outnumber us. So we're going to kill all of the baby boys under the age of two. We're going to throw them all into the Nile River. But Moses' mom wasn't going to allow that to happen. And so by faith, she built a little ark and she placed her son into that ark. And then she placed him into the Nile River. Well, the ark floated and as the Pharaoh's daughter was out in the river, she found this basket and she found the baby and she took the baby as her own. And many years later, this baby boy, this boy that we know by the name of Moses, God was going to use to lead his people out of slavery. One day, while Moses was in the wilderness, he saw this bush that was on fire but wasn't burning. And he went up to it and God spoke to Moses there and told Moses that he wanted him to go back to Egypt and tell the Pharaoh to let his people go. And so Moses obeyed and he went back to Egypt. But when Moses got there and told the Pharaoh that God said to let his people go, the Pharaoh said, no, I'm not going to let God's people go. And because of Pharaoh's disobedience, the people of Egypt 
suffer through 10 plagues. The last plague, boys and girls, was the death of each of the firstborn sons of Egypt. God told the people of Israel, he said, look, kill a lamb, a spotless, blameless, perfect lamb, and take the blood and put it over the doorposts and along the sides. And when the angel of death comes, he's going to pass over your houses. Well, the people of Egypt didn't do that. And Pharaoh's son was killed. And Pharaoh said, enough is enough. Go, you and all of your people. And so Moses took the children of Israel and they began to leave Egypt. Well, as they got towards the Red Sea, Pharaoh changed his mind and he sent his army after them. Well, while they were there, God spoke again to Moses and told Moses to hold out his staff over the Red Sea. And as Moses did that, do you remember what happened, boys and girls? That's right, the Red Sea parted and the children of Israel walked across on dry ground. But who followed them? That's right, the Egyptian army, they followed boys and girls. But by this time, the children of Israel were across and then God told Moses to hold his staff over the sea again and what happened? The water came back together and the entire Egyptian army drowned. You see, boys and girls, God saved Moses for a very special purpose. And that purpose was to rescue his people. And the last plague, the death of the firstborn, is a picture of the payment required for sin. And that payment, boys and girls, is death. You see, this event, the Passover, is remembered every year by God's people because God spared them from the judgment of of the Egyptians. You see, boys and girls, through Jesus, we are rescued from our sin and we are made God's people. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, it says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Jesus took our place, boys and girls. He was our substitute. Well, as we continue, boys and girls, and one of the last stories that we're going to cover today, we're going to look at a story in the book of Numbers. We're going to look at Joshua and Caleb. They were two of the spies. And you can read about this in Numbers chapter 13 and verse 14. You see, boys and girls, when the children of Israel had finally reached the land of Canaan, God told them to send 12 spies into the land to go in to see it. So Moses obeyed, and he told the men to bring back fruit from the land. Well, these men were gone for 40 days. Finally, they returned carrying this big cluster of grapes, so big that it had to be carried by two men on a pole. The land was good. It was going to be good for them. How exciting is that, boys and girls? God was providing. But instead of being excited about the land, they were sad. They knew that the land was good, but they thought the people who lived there were too powerful and they were going to beat them in battle. But only two men, boys and girls, Joshua and Caleb, trusted in God and believe that God would provide and give them the land that he had promised them. They told the people not to be afraid because God was with them. But the people didn't believe them. The people didn't listen. And so God punished his people again for not trusting in him. You see, the children of Israel would spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness because they didn't trust God. From that generation, boys and girls, only Joshua and Caleb would be allowed to enter into the promised land. That was their reward for trusting in God. But God still showed mercy to all of his people. But you know what, boys and girls? They still murmured and they still complained. And so God, he was upset. He wasn't happy that his people didn't trust him. So God sent snakes into the land. And these snakes began biting the people. 
and many of the people died. Well, God told Moses one day, in order for the snakes to go away, in order for the people to live, that he needed to make an image of the snake and to place it on a pole. Moses obeyed God and told the people that anyone who looked at that snake would be healed and they would live. You see, boys and girls, sin created a huge problem for the children of Israel. And like the children of Israel, because of our sin, we face a huge problem. We're separated from God and we deserve death. You see, boys and girls, that bronze snake, that image of the snake that God told Moses to put up in the wilderness would be an example of what Jesus would do for each one of us. Anyone who looks to Jesus on the cross and trusts in him will be saved and be made right with God. You see, boys and girls, the Bible tells us in John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. You see, boys and girls, Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. We look to Jesus, boys and girls, and we have the promise of eternal life through him. And so, boys and girls, as we continue to look throughout the Bible, this one book, these 66 books, all made up in this book that we call the Bible, all points to one thing. Do you remember what that is, boys and girls? The story it tells is of Jesus and what he has done for us. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you again, Lord, for your word, the Bible that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, for the story that it tells all the way through and what you've done, Father, for us by sending your son, Jesus, to this earth to die on a cross. And we pray, Lord, as we open up your word each and every single day that we would see you that we would know you, and that we would continue to have that desire to have that relationship with you. Thank you again, Lord, for this time. Bless the rest of our day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, God bless you, and I'll see you next time.